And uh, hello, everyone. I'm Xu Dong from University of Illinois. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the challenges of building reliable applications on top of modern cloud services and how we address these challenges using RimMaker, our testing tool. This is a collaboration between University of Illinois and Microsoft Research with my colleagues, Infan, Suman, Zhe, and Ting. Modern applications are emerging towards a cloud-based programming model. Different from traditional applications that depend on local system services, such as a file system, database system, machine learning system, and their distributed deployment, these applications depend on cloud services to achieve various functionalities. Today, all major cloud providers offer various cloud services for different functionalities, including storage, database, machine learning, service computing, container management, and so on. We term the applications that depend on cloud services as cloud-backed applications. The cloud-based programming model is getting increasingly and widely adopted. Just to give you some number, to date, Azure has over 700 million users. And the Azure Storage SDK in .NET, which is used to ease cloud-based programming, has around 80,000 daily downloads. Compared to the traditional way, the cloud-based programming offers a lot of benefits. The cloud services provide high scalability, availability, and flexibility. They also make it easy to deploy your application. However, it also has a dark side. It brings in new reliability challenges. Compared to the traditional applications that have simple and shared file domains with the local system services, everything's on single node, the cloud-backed applications file domains are more diverse and complex. More concretely, the call backends are opaque to the applications. The request from the application may not be handled well if the cloud services are running busy or even encountering some internal error. Besides, the network connection between the application and the cloud services may be slow and even break due to some transient faults. What makes things worse is a lack of standards for cloud services. This is different from traditional setting with, for example, project standards. Besides, we observe be, uh, inconsistency in cloud service APIs and SDKs. A concrete example is that AWS S3 SDKs in different programming languages treat the same error limit exceeded in different ways. Some SDK will retry the request if the request fails due to the error, but some does not, which causes confusion to developers. In reality, transient fault can happen at any moment, leading to different errors that disrupt the application. And with all those factors combined together, it's challenging for application developers to anticipate all kinds of faulty scenarios and write comprehensive error handling code. And in practice, when transient fault happen, the most common way to recover from those faults is to retry the request until it succeeds. And indeed, it is also the approach recommended by the cloud providers, including Google, AWS, and Azure. So does it retry solve all the problems? The short answer is no. And let me show you two concrete examples. In the first example, the Microsoft Ball Builder, which is a popular cloud-backed application, is used for building, it's a framework used for building both applications. Ball Builder stores user data at Azure Block Storage as a block. And to do so, it calls the Azure SDK API to send the creation request to create the blob. The request succeeds and the blob gets created. But some, but some transient network fault happens at the response path, which triggers a timeout. And to mask the transient fault, the Azure SDK automatically retries the creation request. The retry request this time fails because the blob already exists, which results in an exception through to Bot Builder. The exception breaks the loop for uploading user data, which further causes data loss. The most tricky part in this example is that uh, the initial request to create a blob actually succeeds and the blob gets created, but it still leads to an unexpected error that failed the application. And sometimes, retrying doesn't lead to explicit exception, but causes a silent semantic violation, which is even worse. In another example, Audience, a popular framework for building distributed applications, it has an API get queue message, which is supposed to get a front message from Azure queue. And this API calls the Azure SDK API to send a DQ request to pop the first message M1 from the queue. Timeout happens at the response time, 
So SDK retries the DQ request to mask the fault. Unfortunately, this DQ request is not idempotent. So the retry DQ request pop another message M2 from the queue and return the message to audience. This behavior violates this, the API semantic of audience because the API is supposed to get one message, but blindly retrying the non idempotent DQ request post the, pop two messages from the queue and returns M2 instead of M1 to audience. And more importantly, from the response, everything seems okay. So Audin is not aware of the problem until it manifests. So how can applications address the emerging reliability challenges of cloud-based programming? In this paper, we make the following contributions. First, we call for attention of the emerging reliability challenges of cloud-based programming under the existing design of cloud service APIs and SDKs. Second, we present a taxonomy to systematically understand the error handling bugs triggered by even transient and common faults in cloud-based applications. And guided by the taxonomy, we present Rainmaker, a push-button reliability testing tool for cloud-based applications. The goal of Rainmaker is to systematically exercise error handling codes under common faults. To date, Rainmaker has detected 73 new bugs in 11 popular cloud-based applications, including the two bugs I have presented. And 51 bugs have been fixed. Rainmaker is released at GitHub. We design Rainmaker with three major goals. First, Rainmaker should be effective in detecting error handling bugs of different patterns. And second, Rainmaker should be easy to use. It should be directly applied to existing testing environments and developers don't need to spend manual efforts writing extra test workloads, oracles, or even specifications. And finally, Rainmaker should efficiently finish testing while ensuring testing coverage metrics. For the rest of the talk, I will mainly talk about how we achieve the three goals. To make Rainmaker effective in detecting error handling bugs, we need to inject a fault to trigger different error handling problems. We want to catch the bugs before production, so we choose to do fault injection during testing. The key question, the key challenge here we need to address is to decide the fault injection policy that is what faults to inject and when to inject them. And to help answer these questions, we develop a taxonomy to systematically understand the error handling bugs in cloud-based applications. We only consider realistic and transient errors that could occur during one REST API call interaction, such as timeout or server busy error, because we want to avoid injecting errors that will never happen in a realistic setting. The taxonomy categorizes all the bugs in two types, no error handling and buggy error handling. And let's take a closer look into the fine-grained types inside buggy error handling. The first pattern is throwing unwritten exception. The key here is that uh, mishandling some trends and faults can lead to a new type of error, which is unrelated to the root cause error. The previously presented board builder example fall in this category. The root cause here is a transient network timeout problem, but it later leads to a retry, and a retry leads to a blob already exists error, which fails the application. The second pattern is a silent semantic violation. It happens the mishandling causes a semantic violation of application API silently. The previously presented audience example falls in this category. Blindly retrying the non important DQ request uh, breaks the semantic of the get queue message. It pops two messages from the queue and doesn't return the correct message to audience. And more importantly, from the response, everything seems okay. The last pattern is state divergence. Sometimes mishandling error causes divergence between the local state maintained at the application site and the remote state maintained at the cloud service site. To give you a concrete example, Bot Builder stores user data in, a con in different containers at Azure Blob Storage. It uses a container set to keep track of all the containers that has created before. And every time to create a new container, it first adds a reference of the container into the local container set, and then it sends a request to create the container. Unfortunately, at this moment, Azure Blob Storage is busy. So the creation request and the retry effort fail, which results in exception through to Bot Builder. Bot Builder catches the exception so it doesn't break, so it doesn't crash. However, it does not undo the update to the container set, which results in a state divergence. That is, the container is actually not created at Azure Blob Storage site. 
But Ball Builder believes the container gets created from its local state. And the local container set contains a dongling pointer points to the container that doesn't exist at all, which later causes a crash. To make RuneMaker effective in detecting error handling bugs, we design RuneMaker's fault injection policies to cover all the patterns here. For example, one of the policy p here introduced time delay to trigger timeout on the response path. The timeout will trigger a retry from the application and the retry request may cause unreality exception or silent semantic violation. Another policy P2 here intercepts the request from the application and also the retry request for the same REST API call interaction to prevent the application from updating the cloud service site, which can potentially lead to state divergence. Note that the Remaker has more policies to trigger more bugs. Besides effectiveness, Remaker is also easy to use. Users can directly apply Remaker to existing testing environments without writing extra test workloads or oracles. And this is mainly achieved by Remaker's fault injection mechanism, that is HTTP layer fault injection. To inject an error, Remaker uses HTTP proxy to intercept the, request, the REST API call from the application to the cloud service. And this allows Remaker to be directly applied to any test case that interacts with the cloud service. Remaker can, in, can intercept a request from the test case and inject an error response, such as service basic. And similarly, it can intercept the response and inject an error, such as the response timeout. Remaker triggers the bugs by running the using test case and inject a fault. And to reliably report the bugs to the developers, Remaker reuses the existing test oracles in the test case. However, naively reusing oracles could lead to false alarms because test code does not necessarily exercise the error handling code in the application source code. And to solve the problem, Remaker analyzes the test execution and output to capture only true alarms. To give you a concrete example, let's say a unit test which directly calls SDK API to interact with the cloud service without going through any application source code. It does so to set up the testing environment before calling the application code. The fault injected by Remaker would fail the test. However, the test failure is a false alarm because it does not point to any error handling bug in the application code. And to, and to avoid reporting such a false alarm, the solution here is that Remaker checks the stack trace of the exception that fails the test. And if the SDK is directly invoked by the tester code, it does not report alarm to the developer because it's likely a false alarm. And finally, Remaker is efficient. It efficiently finishes testing while ensuring coverage. It achieves a balance between efficiency and coverage. Cloud-based applications have many test cases that exercise different SDK APIs at different places. And each SDK API may be invoked for multiple times during test runtime, leading to multiple raster calls with potentially different parameters. To achieve the highest coverage, one can probably inject to every single REST call for every test case here. However, that is prohibitively expensive. In that way, testing audience would take 588 days. So to achieve a balance between coverage and efficiency, Remaker currently provides four coverage metrics for users to choose from. The default metric here tries to cover all the SDK APIs exercised by all the test cases. But for each SDK API, it only injects it to the one of the rest of the call from that SDK API. And in this way, Remaker can reduce the test running time for audience from 588 days to around 56 hours. The other metrics are weaker, but they can run faster. To help users choose the coverage metric based on their testing budget, Remaker automatically generates test plans that achieve the coverage requirement with a minimized test running time for each coverage metric. To do so, Remaker models the problem as a linear optimization problem. It invokes the test cases and SDK APIs exercised by the test case. The constraint comes from the coverage requirements, and the optimization objective is to minimize the test running time. Remaker generates a test plan using a linear optimization solver to help the user choose the coverage metric based on their testing budget. Finally, to evaluate Remaker, we apply it to 11 popular cloud-backed applications. In total, Remaker found 73 new bugs with severe consequences. Meanwhile, it achieves a low fault positive rate of less than 
Compared to exhaustive injecting to every rest of call, Rumiker reduces on average around 64% of the test runs. This table summarizes all the new bugs found by Rumiker. We apply Rumiker to 11 popular cloud backed applications in .NET. These applications include uh, Microsoft Orleans, Bot Builder, EF Core, and many others. These applications are backed by popular cloud services, including Azure Storage, Azure Cosmos DB, AWS S3, SQS. Rumiker found bugs in every tested application, and in total, it found 73 bugs. Among the 73, Rumiker found 29 no error handling bugs, where the application is vulnerable to certain types of transient fault. A common pattern here is that uh, the developers assume the SDK would handle certain types of faults, but actually SDK is not doing that. And such mistakes is actually uh, hard to avoid because first, cloud service APIs and SDKs evolve fast. Second, the inconsistency and the lack of standards here make it even harder. Besides, Remaker detects the 44 bugs caused by misarrow handling that leads to unwritten exception, semantic violation, state divergence, and so on. All those bugs have severe consequences, like application outage, data loss, resource leak, and so on. We reported all the bugs to the developer, and so far, 55 were confirmed, and 51 are fixed. To conclude, Modern applications are emerging towards a cloud-based programming. We call for attention of the emerging reliability challenges of cloud-based programming under the existing design of cloud service APIs and SDKs. To help address those challenges, we present a taxonomy to systematically understand how error handling code can go wrong under the cloud-based transient faults. We present Remaker, a push-button reliability testing tool for cloud-backed applications. Rumiker is effective in detecting different patterns of bugs. It's easy to use as users do not need to write test workloads or oracles and can be directly applied to existing testing environments. And it's also efficient. It balances between coverage and efficiency. Rumiker is released at GitHub, so please feel free to test your application using Rumiker. Thank you. This concludes my talk.